So the two approaches I just uh, described you for making uh, fin fits, both the subtractive uh, approach and the replacement uh, fin approach, were uh, I demonstrated them on a bulk substrate, but you can also make uh, fin fits on these uh, SOI substrates. Uh, so I want to describe you a process flow uh, to make uh, SOI uh, fin fits. And what you do is you start, uh, first of all, the starting point is this um, SOI wafer. So you have uh, this uh, thin uh, silicon fin, which has a thickness, a predefined thickness, which you get from your SOI vendor. And, uh, this, and then you have uh, this uh, oxide layer or this uh, box layer, which uh, separates the silicon, uh, thin silicon from your uh, silicon uh, substrate. And then again, uh, what you can do is you can have your uh, spacer and your uh, hard mask and you can uh, pattern those uh, in here. And then what you do is you pattern these uh, pattern, uh, this uh, silicon or SOI substrate. And what you are left with uh, are essentially a uh, fin uh, which are uh, now standing on top of uh, your oxide. So you are left with these uh, fins and they are uh, standing on this uh, oxide uh, layer. A uh, key difference uh, between uh, this uh, process uh, and the uh, process flow that we uh, did before is that this height of uh, this uh, fin fed device, this height of my fin uh, in uh, or my height uh, of my fin is determined by the thickness of the silicon that I started with. So in the other cases, uh, we saw that your height was determined by the edge back. But uh, since uh, we started from a SOI wafer with a predetermined uh, silicon thickness, the height of my uh, fin in this um, in this uh, SOI fin fit is 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 fixed by uh, this uh, height of the substrate that I started with, which is uh, in a way good because whenever we do uh, edge step uh, to determine the height of my uh, fin, I'll be having additional uh, variability coming into a picture due to this uniformity of this uh, edge process. But uh, in uh, this case of an HOI, uh, SOI, FinFET, my uh, variation in uh, height would be negligible because it, uh, assuming that I had a good uniform uh, silicon substrate, SOI substrate to uh, start with. There's some more additional uh, advantage that you uh, get from uh, your uh, doing a SOI, a FinFET uh, kind of uh, process flow. And I'm using this uh, cartoon from uh, Synopsys uh, to demonstrate uh, this additional um, improvement. So you get an additional improvement in your uh, electrostatics, uh, in your in your uh, subthreshold soap, in your uh, dibble from uh, going from a bulk uh, to a SOI uh, FinFET uh, process flow. So as we discussed earlier, uh, going to uh, going to uh, FinFET process flow, you get very good uh, gate control. So you have this. Uh, fin and I have essentially take, taken apart uh, it along uh, this uh, direction along the fin parallel to the fin direction and my gate will be wrapping around uh, this uh, fin. So I have very good electrostatic in this region where my gate is uh, wrapping around uh, this uh, fin. But what about this region which is uh, below? So in below I don't have my gate wrapping around this uh, substrate below my fin. So my uh, source can still talk to my drain in this uh, region below so this region below is still not controlled my by gate but uh, if I do this SOI fin fit uh, kind of a process flow, I remove this uh, substrate below and replace it uh, with this oxide so I further improve my electrostatic so I further eliminate my uh, talk between my uh, source and drain and I get an even better electrostatic uh, when I go from a bulk to a SOI fin fit flow but that's some additional challenges and I'll, I'll talk to you about those later going uh, when we compare SOI versus uh, bulk fin fit uh, in uh, class. So uh, hopefully you know I have shown you a couple of uh, approaches to make uh, this uh, fin fit uh, 
pattern these uh, fins for making our fin fed transistors so uh, the question we ask is you know what happened to all these uh, implant steps and these isolation steps that we used to do in planar devices so i i described to you earlier uh, when we talked about uh, the process flow uh, for uh, front end of the line uh, that uh, we use these uh, well implants to uh, isolate uh, or to define the regions where we'll be growing our uh, where we'll be making our uh, pmos uh, and uh, nmos devices so we define this uh, p well region and uh, these n well regions to you know define the regions where we make uh, pmos and uh, nmos so how the question is how do i do that uh, in uh, in a finfet uh, device so the answer is uh, is uh, that you can do it uh, two ways so you can have uh, when after we are done defining uh, these uh, uh, fins we can again you know come back and uh, we can what we can do is cover our uh, the fins where we want to make our uh, p well so we cover the rest of these uh, fins by a photo resist and uh, what I can do is then uh, come and do uh, and do a implant step over here. So I want to make a P well over here, so I can do this uh, boron implant, and I can uh, define my uh, P well uh, region. So, but this is this the only way? Uh, probably not there we could do something smarter so what we can do is before uh, we start to make these uh, uh, make these uh, fins what we can do is we can pre-implant our substrate so we can uh, implant our uh, p well and we can uh, implant our n well before we start to pattern these fins and then we can uh, pattern we can take that and we can essentially uh, pattern these uh, after we pattern these fins we automatically have these uh, p wells and uh, n wells uh, defined so we kind of uh, avoid this uh, damage which could have been created uh, in this case uh, by this uh, uh, by this uh, implanting these uh, small and uh, delicate and narrow fins and we have these uh, p wells and n wells uh, built uh, into our uh, fin devices Another thing which is unique to this uh, FinFET uh, process flow and I want to talk to you a little bit about is to how to achieve isolation between uh, this uh uh, our PMOS and our NMOS uh, devices. So when we talked about uh, planar uh, planar devices, I described to you this uh, process flow called uh, shadow trench isolation, which is uh, used to isolate uh, between our uh, PMOS and our NMOS uh, devices. So if uh, if we have our PMOS and NMOS adjacent to each other, they might uh, have this uh, phenomena called uh, latch up and uh, to avoid that we essentially want to isolate our pmos and our nmos uh, regions and the way um, uh, i described to you earlier uh, we achieve that is to uh, do this uh, process flow called uh, shallow trench isolation where we etch this uh, trench into our uh, we etch this uh, trench which separates our uh, pmos our p well and uh, our uh, n-well uh, regions and we fill it up with an oxide and then planarize it and uh, that essentially isolates uh, and avoids any uh, crosstalk between our p-well and uh, n-well so how do we achieve that in uh, in uh, this guy how do we achieve that in our uh, in our uh, finfed devices so the question is how do we achieve isolation in uh, finfed device so if you just look at uh, this uh, if uh, you just look at this uh, picture you have these uh, trenches um, into which you have uh, filled your sorry let me use the color of oxide so you have these trenches into which you have uh, filled oxide and then you etch them back to reveal uh, the, your uh, fin to your uh, given height so you have these uh, silicon uh, fins which are embedded between uh, these uh, oxide uh, trenches so if you think about it you know you already have these uh, trenches or this STI structure or isolation built into your uh, fin fed device so I want to uh, show you one approach where uh, you know you can achieve your uh, 
uh, isolation uh, between your PMOS and your NMOS devices without doing uh, to without doing too much of uh, extra processing. So let's say uh, shown here is this uh, two fins which are of uh, NMOS and uh, these uh, two fins which are of uh, PMOS kind of transistors, and you could have these uh, source drain uh, N plus source drain for NMOS, P plus source drain for uh, PMOS. And uh, you can, uh, what you need then is this uh, P well region and this uh, N well region. And uh, shown here is one approach where as long as I contain my N well region within this, uh, within this uh, height of my uh, etched uh, silicon, I can easily achieve this uh, STI uh, isolation without requiring any more uh, extra steps. So in this case, you can see this isolate this uh, PMOS and these uh, NMOS region are isolated already from uh, these by using this uh, edge that we use to define the uh, define the define our uh, silicon uh, fins. So uh, this is not the only approach, and there could be many possible approaches. Uh, uh, they just uh, depend upon your creativity, and you can be assured that we'll uh, test that in one of the problem sets or. Uh, one of the um, uh, one of the exams to uh, other approaches that uh, you know you can use to achieve uh, isolation but uh, shown here is essentially that since it's a fin and you have these uh, long trenches or long uh, silicon fins you can uh, build into uh, you can build your isolation into your fin so certain process flow uh, process steps become easier there are a lot more process steps which become hard and I'll talk about those in the next uh, video as we move from a planer to a FinFed device.